up, blood suckers and creatures of the night. <laughs> Uncle Logan Myers and my good man over there. Hi, I'm Uncle Henry. How's everybody doing tonight? And we're back to talk about the brand new <laughs> film that everybody's talking about in the horror community, of course. Talk about the brand new vampire flick, Abigail! Abigail! Hello? Here we are. We're reviewing the brand new horror flick. We love horror here at Cinefellas. Me and this guy have been reviewing horror films for years now on the Cinefellas channel. We love talking about horror movies, you know, within the summer blockbuster season here. We're talking about a movie uh, that just came out a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, not enough people saw it at the box office. So it sort of, uh, you know, fell flat at the box office, but it's going to get more life on digital. It's, it's going to do well there. We got a chance to check it out, Abigail. It's it's uh, directed by the the Radio Silence guys. Uh, they you know have directed several movies now, Ready or Not, and most recently uh, the last Scream movie, Scream Six. And they are back and directing this little girl, this twelve year old ballerina character. Uh, so we're introduced to her because she is the daughter of a really wealthy person, and we meet up with this group of criminals in the beginning and they're planning this basically this heist to kidnap her and to uh, you know hold her basically ransom for the night and if they're able to you know hold her and uh, last through the night they're going to get basically 50 million dollars so it sets up this they have no idea why what's so important about this little girl they just know it has to do with this rich family they're going to stay in this mansion all night and if you know everything hopefully goes well they will be able to collect the money and uh, run and go do their own thing. And of course, things aren't always so smooth when you have that much <laughs> money on the line. As we find out in the film, as they, they kidnap her, take her to this mansion, beautiful old mansion, middle of nowhere, and then they're locked inside with her and they soon find out what she really is. And of course, they dive into the character of Abigail, you know, ballerina and creature of the night vampire. She, <laughs> she's very <laughs> scary as a, a young little, you know, young 12 year old girl uh, being a vampire and of course trying to pick off one by one beginning we're introduced to joey played by melissa barrera of course from scream dan stevens may have a hell of a year thus far i loved him in the godzilla kong movie he plays frank he's kind of a douchey character in this group of criminals william callett Catherine newton also having a great year Mm -hmm. um, lisa frankenstein of course angus cloud's last movie he plays dean rest in peace fezco cool seeing him up on the big screen one last time and he really gets you know the beginning of the movie going he's the most interesting person on the screen at least for me anyway I, I liked following him around this mansion seeing him as this criminal he was the driver in the beginning you know he was uh, the getaway guy uh, so we see his character and you know he played much the same as he did on euphoria's character smoking weed smoking blunts drinking you know, looking to get some uh, action on the side with the chicks there in the same mansion. And uh, unfortunately, he serves as uh, food for uh, this creature of the night that uh, they're, you know, with in this mansion. Uh, but the, the film's really set up really cool. They all, all know that they have this girl and they kind of, uh, you know, some bodies start piling up in this mansion and they're trying to figure out what's going on here. And it leads to a lot of uh, questions of who's involved. And somebody in this group of criminals is, you know, knows something more is going on here. And each of the characters have to kind of figure out who it is and who's, you know, double crossing who here. And all eyes point to Uncle Dan Stevens' character, Frank, who's basically playing like this Italian kind of New York Italian kind of guy, uh, the leader of the group. As the movie progresses, we learn more about each one of these characters and their backstories. And we find out, you know, people are not who they originally said they were. You're watching this movie to see the kills and it delivers and that, and it delivers and gallons and buckets of blood, heads being severed, limbs flying off. It delivers in every aspect uh, uh, for your, for you gore hounds out there. I had no interest in seeing this movie. I remember seeing the trailer a few months ago. And then after the last podcast, the, the wild boys were talking this movie up, saying how great it was. You went and saw it before me and said, yeah, you got to check this out. And I'm sure, sure so glad that I watched this. Radio Silence, they, they've been putting out some bangers. They really know how to bring 
uh, the gore factor into horror flicks. And there's, as you said, buckets of blood, ready or not, you know, there's a ton of blood. This movie kicks it up a notch. Obviously having to do, deal with a vampire and the body count and limbs and everything that you'd want in a, a movie like this. There's a lot of practical in this movie, which I also appreciate. Love the the set design. The mansion looked really great. It looked like a spooky place that a vampire would be at. A place mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to be, you know, late at night. And uh, I thought the cast really sold this. A lot funnier than I thought it would be. Having to do with Kevin Durant's character, Peter, I thought he was really hilarious. He was like the big goofball of, of the, the criminals. And he's mm-hmm. always great in everything he's in. And I thought Dan Stevens was... A really likable douchebag, I guess, some ways. And, <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, Angus Cloud, yeah, definitely probably the best of, out of the crew. And I loved his performance. And sad to see him go at a young age. And of course, uh, Catherine Newton, it's no newbie to the horror genre. She was really fantastic as Sammy. In the movie, they kind of dive into each character and their past lives. Speaking of characters, let's talk about the main character and who plays Abigail, Alicia Weir, this young actress. She does a great job in this, very believable very innocent acting in the in the beginning when you're first introduced to her and you know her performance when she turns into the vampire is really great you know believable yeah. she's vicious she did a tremendous job in this i think she played matilda in uh, a, for netflix uh, a couple of years i don't know when it was i never saw it but a year or two ago maybe but she really did a great job as abigail very believable i liked her whole um scene where she was doing her ballerina dance and then yeah. kind of went off on people too at the end. But like you were mentioning, yeah, the set design, terrific. That mansion was awesome. All the traps basically and all the, the things involved in that and the practical effects, like you mentioned, those blew me away. It's so great to see this day and age practical effects making a comeback lately in the horror movies yes. that we've seen. Like, you know, we see that people respond to practical effects and these filmmakers are noticing that and, using more in their movies and it looks great. It keeps you in the movie, you know, whereas if it was a ton of CGI, you'd be like, Oh, here we go again. Yeah. I could tell that was fake blood. Even like you can tell sometimes when you're watching a movie and like, say somebody gets shot in the head and there's the pool of blood. You can tell if it's a CGI pool start to forming It immediately takes you out. All you have to do is use some fake blood on the floor and just, you know, regardless if it, looks matches the color of blood just the fact that it's using a real substance for the blood keeps you in the scene more and when they have the big scene in this where uh, basically a body explodes and blood is everywhere it just looks awesome because you know everybody gets drenched in it and it's real it's tangible it's all over it covers everything so kudos for that that's those are my favorite parts of the movie um there's some comedic parts like you mentioned And the less you know about this movie, the better. We've basically told you, you know, what the setup is and what kind of at the surface. There's some surprises here of where it goes and some surprising people that show up along the the way, too, in this movie. So definitely a surprise for me and a movie that I definitely enjoyed and um, wish more people got a chance to see this in the theaters and really hope it does goes on to do really well digitally. And hopefully we get to, you know, go back into this universe because the ending of it and how things end up, it's uh, there's a chance for this to be revisited and there is life for this to go on to be a franchise if it wanted to. But if not, it's definitely solidifies radio silence and those, the directing team there that uh, they're a force to be reckoned with in the horror industry nowadays. Yeah, they're one of the few directors out there that consistently put out good horror flicks, paying homage to old ones, using practical effects, really focusing on the characters and the story. And uh, yet another example of this. And uh, yeah, movie I wasn't really too excited for, but I'm glad I watched this. This is a hell of a good time at the movie theater. Another hit in the horror genre for 2024. Really great performances, great story. I thought it was unique in many ways. A lot of twists and turns along the way. And then them finding out who Abigail's father you know, is it's pretty cool. Not giving too much away, and I like the ending, setting it up for possible sequels, and hopefully they do. And uh, really impressed with this standout. Really for me was uh, Dan Stevens, Alicia, Alicia Ware playing Abigail, young actress, innocent and scary at the same time. Catherine Newton, Kevin Durant, of course Angus Cloud, and uh, Melissa Brera was pretty good too. 
and her role and what she's going through. Practical effects were definitely stand out here. Uh, the buckets of blood when, you know, some people explode, you know, limbs flying <laughs> everywhere, just buckets of buckets of blood. It's like on a water ride at Disney or Great America. <laughs> but just blood, though. <laughs> so that being said, I'm giving Abigail, currently playing in cinemas, I'm going to give it a four out of five vampire hair pieces. <laughs> Yes, it's definitely worth that same score for me too. Everything that you mentioned, everything we've talked about, you definitely want to check this movie out. It's awesome. They did a great job. Everybody involved in this. Kevin Durant, like you like you said, he's having a hell of a summer. This movie, and then he was just in Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Um, he was badass in that too. So check out Abigail, everybody. I'm too going to give it a four out of five Fezco hair pieces. Rest in peace, player. Don't want to hear from all you wild vampires out there. What did you like about Abigail? What did you like about it? What's your favorite flick of 2024 thus far? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to bite. Subscribe. Also check out these wild uncles on Facebook, X, and Instagram, and our website, cinefellas.com, for the latest, greatest TV, movie, news, and reviews. It's been a hell of a year for horror so far. I feel like we've been getting a horse. both, actually. <laughs> But anyways, we'll be back very soon to review some more horror this summer movie season. Um, there's some TV coming out, Interview with a Vampire, some more vampire action, some more bloody goodness on the way from these two horror junkies and horror hounds, like you mentioned. <laughs> so until then, until the next Cinefellas Movie Review, I'm Uncle Henry Hill. And I'm Uncle Kevin Durant, signing out to the <laughs> next movie review. Cheers! Cheers.